Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. A trilateral meeting was held in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina between the Croatian president, the three members of the presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the president of Serbia. The focus of the meeting was on the European Commission's Western Balkan strategy and eventual EU accession. However, questions at the media conference focused on proposed changes to the election law, a topic especially sensitive to Croats. Since current legislation allows Bosnian Muslims to outvote Croats and thereby decide who will represent them in public office. We didn't discuss that issue today, but we did inform our colleagues from Croatia and Serbia where we stand on the issue and our expectation that we finally amend the election law in order to satisfy the decision of the Constitutional Court regarding the legitimacy of representation of the constituent peoples in government. I didn't want to get hung up on analyzing that question because I feel it's an internal affair for Bosnia and Herzegovina. Besides, I don't think our friends from either Belgrade or Zagreb can help us in this regard. I think the situation is more serious than we thought. This topic will certainly be a burden in the months to come for us in Bosnia and Herzegovina. In domestic news, the newly appointed crisis manager for Agricor, Fabrice Perushko, addressed the media for the first time since replacing Ante Ramjak. Perushko presented the consortium's business results from 2017, which he described as good, and announced a meeting with Russia's state-owned Sberbank, Agricor's single largest creditor. He said the priority was reaching a settlement agreement with Agricor's many creditors as soon as possible. We've already had two meetings with Sperbank. Today we'll have another one. We have made some important headway in our discussions with Sperbank. At the same time, we are still in the very early stages. We have some very clearly defined ways how we can bring our two sides closer together. I expect us to reach a deal very shortly. In more Agricor news, Zagreb's county court has accepted the appeals filed by 16 suspects in the Agricor case and unblocked their assets including the consortium's founder Ivica Todoric, but had his agricultural-related holdings in the Netherlands blocked. Opposition parties in Parliament have begun gathering the signatures of MPs in order to initiate a motion for a vote of no confidence in Deputy Prime Minister Martina Dalic. In this situation, it's not important if someone has 72, 74 or 76 votes. What's important here is the wishes of the citizens of Croatia. Citizens clearly want Andrei Plenković to remove Martina Dalic from the Croatian government. The voter base of the HDZ does not even support the Deputy Prime Minister, and not only due to her role in the Agricor affair, even beforehand she wasn't exactly a popular politician. Besides, she became a Deputy Prime Minister not based on election results, but at the behest of Andrei Plenković. And through informal discussions in Parliament, I have barely heard any MP say they support Martina Dalic or the work she has done. As for the opposition and the actual vote of no confidence, we will see if MPs trust their instincts and follow their conscience, or if they will follow party directives. We'll just have to wait and see. Meanwhile, the governing coalition led by the HDZ once again put its weight behind Minister Dalic and the merits of the so-called Lex Agricor. They say there are no grounds for her removal and repeated that both the government and the minister have the support of the parliamentary majority. First and foremost, we are not afraid of the moves being undertaken by the opposition. It is their right to request the removal of anyone from the government. That is their right as the opposition. We, on the other hand, are concentrated on the serious issues that we are working to address. We are concerned about the functionality of the government and the country as a whole. Everything will become clear during the restructuring process. Once the law proves its worth, which it no doubt will, then this will speak of the minister's success in this regard. All of those who attack the so-called Lex Agricor and seek to add various amendments to it fail to understand that the law was based on the recommendations of the European Commission. Companies of systemic importance to the economy must be given specific legislation. Agriculture Minister Tomislav Tolušić attended the opening of the third National Agricultural Conference in Osijek. The main goal is to help modernize the farming industry through investments and innovation, so that Croatian products are more competitive on domestic and international markets. 
500 million euros worth of public tenders were issued last year. This year we expect the same amount or even more. This will certainly add to the optimism that Croatia's agricultural workers in Slavonia or anywhere else in the country can live comfortably from the fruits of their labors. Furthermore, the law on agricultural land and the law on the prevention of unfair market practices have certainly helped to protect Croatian agricultural producers. Defense Minister Damir Krstičević attended the inaugural PESCO defense strategy meeting in Brussels earlier this afternoon. The initiative includes 25 EU member states whose military capabilities fulfill higher criteria and who wish to work more closely together under the united framework of the so-called permanent structured cooperation. Today it was decided to initiate 17 PESCO projects. We have recognized five projects that are of importance to us and the development of the defensive capabilities of the Croatian Army. These are specific to the Army's mobility, cybersecurity, maritime surveillance, responding to disasters and logistics. Taking a quick look at sports in the 16th round of play in the regional Southeast European Handball League, PPD Zagreb beat Slovenian side Gorenje Velenje in Zagreb this evening 26-25. The narrow win puts PPD into the final four. PPD's next game will be against Serbian side Dinamo in Pančevo. Turning to NBA basketball from Monday night, Croatia's Bojan Bogdanovic put in one of the best performances of his career, and certainly this season, leading the Indiana Pacers to a 92-89 win over the Milwaukee Bucks with 29 points, four rebounds, three assists, and two steals. And the weather forecast for tomorrow calls for partly cloudy skies and isolated showers and thunderstorms along the Adriatic coast. Sleet is expected in higher elevations. Northern areas of the continent will be mostly dry. Rain is expected overnight on Wednesday into Thursday. The Adriatic will get moderate to strong southwesterly and southeasterly winds. Morning lows of minus 2 to 2 degrees inland and from 5 to 11 in Istria and Dalmatia will give way to highs of 5 to 11 throughout the continent and from 11 to 15 degrees Celsius on the coast. Continental areas can expect rain on Thursday afternoon, especially in the far east. Southwesterly winds on Friday will usher in mostly sunny skies with average temperatures for this time of year and even warmer on the weekend. Rains on Thursday will arrive early in the morning on the coast but are expected to clear by the afternoon. A moderate to strong northwesterly wind will blow in Dalmatia. Friday looks to be mostly without precipitation. A southeasterly wind will gain strength on Saturday, bringing rain showers to areas of the north. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow night.